Hi everyone, I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I hope you've all had a really good Christmas. I've had a really good Christmas. I got the present that I really wanted from my hubby James. It was a coffee percolator, but one that does two mugs worth of coffee, which is exactly what I need for my drinks flask. So I have been using that twice a day so much nicer than the instant coffee I'm very very happy um, the other thing he got me is you know this little pen I use to pick up beads and put eyes in place well he got me a more pretty version of it so I'm very very it's cute and yeah some of the clay to pick it that you put on the end of the pen um it's a 3d bead pen is what they call it online but it's brilliant for picking up beads so you can place them exactly where you want and i do that also for my eyeballs right i know i promised we'll be doing fawn again today and we've got all the body ready we just need to do the head i am hot mess you can see my hair's not great not doing well so i thought i would go and do a highland cow because a lot easier than a, <clears throat> a human face very cute and i don't think i've done one of them yet on this stream so quick overview of quick look at what the highland cow looks like it is a cow it's from the highlands of scotland originally now as you can see it's got this long thick woolly hair had to include the one with the baby in the bottom because who don't like a baby cow but that's where we're going right take that down this is the only time i've made one was a little charm so i do a little circle of him now i want to make a bigger one you know my statues with the little crystal heart i want to do one of them for the highland cow so gonna get started on the base <clears throat> four different shades of green this one is um what i call oh, can i remember it here it is never remember the name right this one's true green that one's leaf green that's leaf green and gold that one is so pretty. the what i love the leaf green and gold it's yeah so i do love leaf green and gold i do do that mix and that's their other green on the fire mode that i can never remember right yeah the true green i've mixed with a bit of black to make the dark green you can see i'm foggy brained at the moment can't you and all i've done is twisted them together doesn't matter which ones you twist together because as you can see we're going to twist them all together anyway if you want to include more than four greens you totally can just make sure that the stacks of color that you twist twist together are either two sticks next to each other or three sticks so one in the middle between the two if you try to twist four together at once you will find one of the colors will just stare as a normal stick down the middle and the other three will twist around the outside of it so you will end up with these big patches of solid color so twos and threes are the rules for this if it breaks absolutely fine just hold on the brake and twist either side of it and if there's two close together like that just hold the two brakes and then twist them up it will not change anything about how the end result looks make sure you've twisted right the way up to the tips then you're going to fold it in half and twist the two halves together now you'll find it gets shorter when you do that and you've got to encourage it i find pushing inwards helps 
when you've got a large amount twisting together like this so you're down to that now I can only manage one more fold but you keep folding and twisting until you get it into this sort of ball shape because it depends on how long your strands were but this is where we're at I'm going to push together there because I can see there's a big air gap there I don't want that when I roll it into a ball so I'm just pushing two sides together to block that like that right now you don't need to get it completely smooth because we're going to bring it into a long stick hi Darth bro lovely to see you we did have a good Christmas I baked a ridiculous amount of sponge cake um, it really was ridiculous <clears throat> you know for sponge cake it's 100 grams sugar 100 grams butter 100 grams flour yeah this cake had 600 of each of those mammoth ridiculous I split it in half put cocoa powder in half of it and then marbled it all up chopped the whole once it was baked in a big tray chopped it in half put white icing on one half and melted galaxy and dark chocolate mix on the other half I didn't I didn't mean to make that much sponge to be fair but it went we all got to go on a diet now but it went but yeah it's nice this year I just figured normally we don't go crazy in this household at Christmas but this year has been one of those years where I thought we need to have a week of indulgence and then sort it out once we've replenished our minds a bit right so as you can see we're bringing it out into a stick now I advise don't make your sticks too thin that you can't handle them and they all just sort of flop on each other it don't make it harder than it needs to be so I tend to stay to about this thick when I've got this level of clay from here I'm going to twist it on itself so I'm holding this end still and then pushing this end up like that to create that spiral because I tell you now if you sit there with your hand doing that your wrist is gonna really hurt very quickly whereas this way it doesn't so always think about your ergonomics when you're claying make sure the spiral goes all the way to the end so I'm getting the ends and just giving them a quick twist then like you did before we're folding it in half twisting it on itself and folding it once you've got a twist going that's quite tight fold again and twist again how was your Christmas staff bra did you get anything you liked no response fair enough yeah it's, it's so fast, slow isn't it it's laggy. <laughs> it's laggy oh one of these days i'm gonna end up with lots and lots of people talking and i'm not gonna be able to keep up with it all that's a future problem but i have to admit my numbers have gone up i'm over 200 subscribers on youtube which i'm really pleased about actually um I did a video which was a introduction to polymer clay that got quite a few views I mean we're not talking thousands but it was amazing I got like a couple of hundred in the first few days I was like "Ooh, that's so cool right once you rolled it into a rough ball again don't worry about the join marks yet I'm gonna push it into a rough cube because this is what we're going to do you can keep it with those lines that's an okay pattern but it's not my favorite pattern 
that's my flexible I don't even know why I keep a flexible blade in there I'm going to put that in with my other blade because I use them so infrequently and all I do is keep getting a flexible one out sorry about that right. rigid blade you're going to cut the sides off and the inside pattern I think is so much prettier than the lines so we're going to go around we're going to cut those sides off but we're not wasting them don't worry like so what we're going to do is we're going to flip them so the line side is facing towards the block and the pattern side is facing inwards you don't have to make them fit perfectly anywhere will do you can literally bring them over a corner if you forgot to chop off a bit just get them back on there in that facing the right way there we are they're all back on then <clears throat> you roll that out and that pattern is all the way through the whole block then so all the clay is usable and uniform and in all my time of claying which it turns out it's around five years now i've never come back across those line bits because it's such a thin layer of the clay you just never hit on it again once it's all joint back on so don't get rid of the bits you're slicing off is the take home from that right now I need a bit of this green for the base and I need a bit of this green to go around a heart so I'm going to take off some to put around the heart in a bit then I can focus on smoothing blade the other direction smoothing this out and putting it into a ball you can get bases online like wooden ones but I have never actually forked out for them I've always just made my own out of clay and I find it's a lot easier because your clay sticks to clay a lot a lot simpler with the wooden bases you'll have to use a wire armature in your creation and drill holes for the wire to go through the base and then attach it underneath i don't think i've ever brought a drill out so far on any of my clay projects right did i not get a bit of paper ready sorry i normally do this so you're not listening to the tearing but as i said i've been a hot mess today there we go, a bit of baking paper. Get your ball on there. Now, we're going to roll that into a disc. And what you do is you just do the same amount of rolls on each side and keep spinning it. <clears throat> and that gets it to come out pretty even. Now, what you will find is where you're stretching the design this the top side will come out with a different pattern to the underside because the underside the design is being held by the paper so it's not smudging out as much as the top and at the end you get to choose which side you want to be the top and which side you want to be the bottom depending on the look you want for your base now you don't want to take your base too too thin because you want it to be stable for your model to stand on and polymer clay is pretty flexible so a thin piece is prone to bending a lot is not what you want so as you can see that's quite stretched out and swirly but if you look at the underside it's a 
lot more tighter and I think I'm going to use that side as the top so what I'm going to do now I've decided I'm going to go around on these edges and I'm going to push them into a flat lip again you don't have to do that you can stay with the rounded disc but I think it looks more clean when it just slopes down like that and also I found especially if you've got a pet cat or something that likes to tip ornaments off of shelves it's harder for them to tip something where the lip goes right the way down they can't get their paw under it so it's a bit more of a stabler design if you find your clay cracks when you push down on it just gently pat and rub on the area that's cracking and it will all smooth back in it's just where you're asking for a big movement in the clay and it's complaining a bit but it's no bothers the crack don't run deep it's just on the surface so you can just pat it away very simply so as you can see it's not a long process getting your base made up and I really think this bit is worth the extra time it takes one furnish away now you can texture this with a texture sheet if you want I'm going to leave this one smooth I think make sure that all those cracks are gone and it's even yep that's where I want it because I conditioned this yesterday and this room's quite warm the clay is a little bit more prone to cracking today which is just my luck there we go right that's how I want it so I bring it as a close-up as you can see there's the slope down that's my base now quick wipe of my hands because I'm going from green to brown and getting started on my cow right what I've done here is made a foil ball kind of like that and used the desk to smooth it and shape it into a teardrop shape then I've covered it in masking tape the reason for the masking tape is where it's a semi-porous surface the clay sticks to it a lot easier so and also any points of foil where it's a metal point it's far more likely to come through the clay than points on the paper so I'm going to move my green out of the way and we're going to cover that for the body now the reason why we're using foil and paper in the center instead of just making it solid clay is because where it is such a thick piece it's a lot harder for the oven to get the 110 degrees temperature through to the center of that clay and you'll find if it doesn't hit temperature it doesn't turn into the hard plastic so then you're left with a center of soft clay well foil is a lot more structurally sound than soft clay is so you're actually a lot less liable to get breakages so i've just taken off a bit of brown this is chocolate that i mixed a tiny bit of yellow into just to lighten it up a bit if i spent more time on it i would have taken it probably a little bit lighter but i only decided to lighten it down about 15 minutes before streaming one of those days mm -hmm. right I'm taking it down again you don't want to go too thin on anything because 
it means that your clay is less manageable I like this sort of thickness I think that's about what do you say two or three millimeters there yeah, you can, get your out. I can get my calipers out but yeah, about two to three millimeters you can use your pasta machine you don't need to use your pasta machine it's a lot of cleaning for this just roll it out if it gets stuck to your glass board and you couldn't peel it off usually that's because it's quite thin use your blade put the blade side down you're holding each end of your tissue blade and you're running it towards you like that and it lifts it off perfect make sure whenever you put your tissue blade down blade away from you the amount of injuries of arms doing that you don't want it now wrapping your ball in your clay you're trying to make sure that you're not trapping any air so you're forcing from the center out towards the edge all the time air bubbles will not make it shatter like with ceramics but they will be an unstable pocket because you've then got moving air instead of it joint on to your nice solid base so I brought it up so we've got that sort of seat look going on and that gives you just another extra chance to get that air out before we start to fold over like that now I do end up with mouse ears that is a thing and what I'm going to try and do is put some of that mouse ear to one side and the other bit up the back like that so then I can start to do some neck with that we're going to roll it out smooth now I know it's easier to do with a ball and this is a teardrop but you get a far smoother end result than you would going over with your thumbs like that we will do a bit of thumb rubbing the join marks away but I love a glass board for getting you the utmost control of your clay I know there are lots of other surfaces people swear by but I don't know I've, I've tried the green cutting mats and my clay stuck to them and you ended up with it you couldn't get your blade under it cleanly without taking some of the mat off with the clay it was a mess um, some people use plastic surfaces I find it's more prone to sticking when I've tried that so I've just literally got glass chopping boards from the kitchen section of Amazon and they only came with a rough surface so what I did was a little feet I took the little rubber feet off flipped it over so the smooth side is now the top painted the underside white so you've actually got a clean surface a clean um, color to see and they have been brilliant cheap as chips bit of acrylic paint and then just stuck the feet back on right so we've got a basic cow body now I'm going to take this and just start to bring it up into a bit of a neck shape like so they've not got a lot of neck they're not a horse but just a little bit just bringing it up like that okay so on to some legs you want all four bits of clay the same size as each other 
um, you can get your little weighing scale out I definitely have done that before but I find eyeballing it is just as good here we go right four legs I keep doing it today blade away Carly we do not need a trip to hospital at the moment now it's far easier to work from clay when it's shaped into a ball so I'll just bring these from discs into balls pretty quickly no I know right no hospital at the start of all this I did get some of those um, sticky butterfly stitches because me and James both do stuff with knives and chisels and saws and things like that because I do all my clay and but Jamie um, modifies computer consoles and various gadgets I thought get some butterfly strips so then at least if we get a cut we have a chance of avoiding hospital right cow leg we're going to leave the top of the ball for the minute and we're just going to focus on pulling some clay down into a stick shape to make a leg like so and then the ball top I'm just pinching it and making it more of that chicken drumstick shape rather than the very round shape so that's just pinching around the top that does that so decide your leg length and how I decide that is looking at it against the cow body actually these balls are too big typical me isn't it so let's half that down because I've got too much leg for cow everything that could go wrong is going wrong well no it's not that bad is it really but I'm still glad I didn't do my fawn's face I'm pretty sure I would have got that wrong today which in and of itself makes an interesting video actually so far I haven't got any real big mistakes going on any of my live streams and the thing is that a lot of you might not know half the time it's the first time me doing it so I'm not one of these people that go away and practice tons and then come back to do my live stream no I just sort of get an idea and go for it probably not the best way but I figure if I get things wrong on stream then at least you all can see how I get out of it so that looks more like it leg wise because they have got pretty chunky legs the highland of scotland for anyone who's not uk based the weather is pretty harsh up there because it is kind of mountainous and uk weather and scotland has never had the greatest weather anyway lovely place though i visited glasgow absolutely loved it but i think it rained the entire time so yeah um the cows need to have a decent coat to them and it makes them look so cute and pretty really does they're very popular highland cows and I think they're quite sweet natured I have watched a few videos on them so I can understand the bigger pill but they are pretty much everywhere them sloths and llamas at the moment are the three animals I'm seeing on every thing that they can put them on I was looking for duvet covers and there was lots of them right four legs about the same sort of length now you're gonna have to line these up you don't want to go all the way to the top of the 
back you want to go about halfway down so about there yeah better to get it correct than push it on and then have to take it off now I do the two back legs first because I want to make sure that they're the same height as each other and that is easiest from the back actually so like that Can you see the the line between the tops of them are pretty much the same and then I secure them down making sure they're fully pushed on and then we go up to the front ones and they are just behind the neck bend there at the same height as the front ones like so whoops do make sure you're not bending your legs under when you're messing with the front ones it's very easy to catch them and knock them under and it makes them it can make them um, start to crack on the underside when you try to bend them back so I tend to like to put my thumb between them just to stop me doing it because I know it's a habit of mine right let's line them up from the front like that and push these on right make sure that they're standing correctly like so whoop here we are and again just use your glass board to help you get your legs right there we go like so now if I wasn't going to cover these all in lots of hair I would spend time making sure all these join lines were smoothed in but since I am going to cover it in hair I'm not bothering with that right next thing to do is let's get some florist wire mm, that thickness would do me and what we're going to do is poke that down that neck and experience will help you with this but you've got to visualize it going down into the ball but not out the sides keep it very very central and then once you've got it in and you felt that it's gone into the ball properly get your pliers and cut it a few centimeters sticking up the top like that whoop come on there we go and this will help your you put your head on properly I'm just going to squeeze that neck again around that wire to make sure that it's not gone loose and baggy if you wiggle sideways that hole gets wider so it's good to make sure that it's all right double check that none of your legs are bending under I have to do that a lot with these four legged animals especially if I've not got a wire armature make sure you haven't accidentally crumpled the legs so we're now on a head that actually looks to be about the right size for the head you know I'm going to use it let's put the brown out to one side now you really want quite a teardrop shape like so then what you do is you go at the base of the teardrop and you just start to push that up a bit so it's got a little bend to it do you see like so yeah that's your cow face now <clears throat> We're then going to put that onto that spike 
and push it down against the neck but you're not hold the neck you want the pressure to go from the head to the neck but not through into those legs so you're smushing them down against the board and making your legs all short okay there we are cow head cow neck that's the basic shape right so <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is get a bit of pink and do a nice big cow nose they have quite a large nose quite a wet look so you're going for round but kind of like an oval disc so like that see so not in not perfectly round and that's going to go on the top of the snout there make sure it's level like that then we need our pin tool where is my pin tool there we are pin tool hold your cows back in your hand like this put your thumb under the chin to support the face and then you're going to put in two big nostrils like so okay the possibly are but you can actually move them over like that just drag the clay and then suddenly they're not so off center but those nostrils definitely need to be a wider circle there we are that looks more like it to me Whoop. and again pay attention to what you're doing with the legs and I'm going to draw a smile on him so down the bottom round the front and then up the side like that okay little smile now get my pink out the way couple of little black eyes so I need a tiny bit of that black because they've got quite small eyes actually so two balls make sure your two balls are the same size as each other it looks odd if one of the eyes is bigger than the other we're going to put them in towards the side because predators tend to have very faith front facing eyes and prey species tend to have them at the side just make sure that they're level with each other right like so the rest of this black we're going to make some hooves out of so we need some bigger balls but again, size them up against the cow's feet. That'll probably do. I find it very, very hard to eyeball non-round shapes. And I think that's the case for everyone. It's why we all tend to start off with balls of clay and then go into shaping them into other things. They look about right. Okay. But if you wondered why we always tend to start out with balls, I think that's why. Although I'm not entirely certain. But I'm going to get this black out of the way and then give my hands a quick wipe down. Because I'm thinking I might do some little white dots. Now, it's tempting to get a ball and then push it on and then smudge it but you're liable to shrink the leg size down by that so what I tend to do is between my fingers give it a little tap and then come round and squeeze around the sides to make them more straight 
so it looks far more like a hoof shape yeah and do that for each of the balls because hooves don't have that bulge to the sides they're pretty flat so it's more of a cylinder you're looking for like that and doing them all together means you can check they're all roughly the same height now another color i tend to do hoofs in other than just plain black is i'll mix a little touch of silver in and it goes to a gunmetal kind of color i love doing that if i can get away with it so i tend to put them on horses and unicorns and things like that but I think it's a really good hoof colour. So four little black discs and you're going to put them in the middle of those feet like so. Just make sure you're not push you're pushing them on hard enough to stick but not hard enough that you're shrinking the leg length. I want that head to be up a little more like that right okay now for the fun bit get that black out of the way should I put a little white dot in the eyes I'm gonna varnish them I think they'll catch light naturally right what I've got is a tray full of different browns twisted together into spirals that's a um ochre and like a grey brown we've got a very grey brown and orange a very light chocolate with that's the ochre that's the tan so you can see what I mean oranges reds so the burgundies in there ochres those sorts of colors and what I did was I made up a two colored version of the twisty clay that I made for the base then chopped those into little bits brought them out into strands and then twisted them together and that's what you end up with since that was a solid day's work I am not going I thought there's no way you guys will want to watch that so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the legs and we're going to start on the inside of them so like that Oop. and come round and put them together random colors mixed up like that and as soon as we start to come out into open area then I'll stop and go on to the next leg but what I'm trying to do is the hardest to get to bits first if you do all the outside and then try and get into these difficult bits you're gonna have a real struggle so be patient you can make your curls a lot shorter than the ones I've used and sort of layer them up we're going to layer up on the back but I wanted to make it roughly leg length if they're slightly long just push them downwards and you'll find the curls get fatter as the length comes away so like that yeah right okay next leg but they do go pretty quick or you can just literally snap the end off if you think they're too long until they're down to the length you want but all these ways are perfectly acceptable ways of getting your curls the right length without doing a bit of measuring because anyone who watches this channel with me knows that I avoid measuring anything as much as I possibly can like so now the thing to remember is make sure that you're pushing these down properly 
because they're going to be really difficult to glue on if they come off so spend some time and really tap them down and get them into place but it does come along pretty quick <clears throat> I was planning on making a big crumble for New Year's I'm not sure whether I'll... we've just been puddinged out by my cake session apparently that can't happen says Jamie it's possible that was a lot of cake can you see so far how they're it's coming together really quickly I'm not going to bother covering the tummy and the reason behind that is it's not really going to be seen that much if you think about it it's going to be on top of the model so they're really going to have to pick it up and do a lot of um, holding it all over the place to see that the underside really isn't covered and it'll be quite hard to get the hairs to lay in a direction that looked right on the underside there. Right, I got that mostly covered legwise on the underside. So it's at this point, I'm going to get that base and put it in place. Now I'm going to put it a bit far back further back because I want to put a little heart in next to it under its chin let's get these legs make sure they're firmly pushed down you can put a bit of wire in the underside of the legs if you are worried that they're not going to stick down properly but I don't think you really have that much to worry about so I want that bend going that way like that that's better so we've got the inside leg and the cow in place I know he's not got ears we're going to do ears after we covered the body so we now go around and carry on covering the outside of those legs as the next thing to do And it's a fun project, especially if you've got little kids. You can make the main body for them if they're very young. And then they can lay all their hairs on. Liz, Liz, little, Liz says, Hi Carly, how are you? Hi. I'm feeling a bit rubbish, but doing an easy project. And like always, very happy. How are you? right do try to get the hairs tucked into gaps that are there so that it doesn't look like just one solid um shape and it does look still like four legs and keep checking that you're not pushing it over and buckling the legs on it which again can be quite easy to do Says, sorry not been around lately that's all right the only one that's meant to be around every week is me and even i don't manage that with my health right that's one leg covered in so it goes together pretty quickly once you get to this stage and I'm trying not to put too many of the same colour together but I'm really not focusing that much because it is going to look quite random but I think it looks more interesting with different coloured twists again you could do it all solid one brown that will look perfectly fine if you don't want to twist up several browns together but I think it makes just a bit more of an interesting 
model at the end of it all. Right. What I need to do is stop taking the same colours all the time because I'm not looking. One more piece in and that will be the second leg done. There we are. So that's the bottom of two legs. So what I'm going to do is build up and do one side of it and I'll do the other side off camera so you're not sat watching. What I do from this point is first of all I start working on the neck and you're going to lay it like a mane so top of the neck going down to the side okay that's the next one in Liz says it's a cow with a long coat it's a highland yep highland cow I wouldn't say my favourite cow because I have a lot of cows that I really think are cute but they are really pretty so when you get to the top of that leg like here what we're going to do is although we're starting on the middle of that part in we bend it into the top of that leg there so it's stuck out like that and then bring it over so that it follows the shape of that leg so we'll still get that slight dip for the shoulder blade that makes sense now when you start getting to the back where it's going to be too long so the top head doesn't overlap the one underneath you're going to come down to the top of the leg and put it in towards that bit okay and we will come back in with another row above it um, that color not done one of them yet so just anywhere where you see plain brown you just sort of put your eyes to it and just push it in so that there's not a lot of the plain brown showing doesn't matter if there's a bit really doesn't because it does still look fully furry so we get the point so can you see that's how I've done that leg in and then I'm gonna come in do the same for the other back leg and then come round and do a top coat along the back okay so let's put one in there I'm going to put actually between those two legs there's a space so I'm going up to the top of the back there and just filling that in quickly before I come in and do the top of the next leg like so so yes yeah, curls falling apart you can, if you are running low on twists and one of your twists breaks, wedge it back together and make sure the brake section is towards the back and you can still use it because it's being structurally held together by the back of the clay. Pro tip there. So fold them over like so. This is a good job if you're wanting something to do and your brain's a bit foggy so you're not sure you can do anything where you've actually got to do something complex this is the perfect job you can just sit here and mindlessly add in your clay curls right let's show you so far so we're around the front we've got the top of the legs in like that around to the back okay now I'm coming in over the top 
across here. So again, picture where the spine is and you're going in a straight line across that like so and this one's quite quick because you've really not got much of a um, contoured surface to try and get it all to tap into so it does go together very quick this final line Mm, that one I'm hoping by next week I've had enough rest and gotten over Christmas sufficiently that I can actually carry on with my fawn I'm really sorry to anyone who's been working along with me on that and I have not had the last instruction for a little while Right, we're now up to the back end. So from there, this is where you've got to do a bit of shaping. You're going again along the middle line, but you're curving it round to start to bring it straight down. Does that make sense? Like this. So curving round into the bare bit of clay like that now i'm gonna do the other side of the back end because we've got to put a towel on it because it's a cow and that's what cows have so it would have come in like that now again you should do the legs and the whole rest of the side before you do the back in like I'm doing here but I'm just showing you the important bits nope I got that color there already so can you see how that middle parting helps us almost picture that there definitely is a spine going along there it's little tricks like these that just make your creations more believable because we expect a spine in a mammal we expect a spine in many animals um, when you've got an upright standing animal like us the spine is a dip in if you see with an animal on all fours you get that bulge and that's just a, a gravity weight thing so almost there one last one I think let's get that long red one whoop there we are right so that's the back end covered in so what I'm gonna do is I am going to get two of the two small bits so have a look around find two that are a different color what I could also do actually is use some of these off cuts where I pinched off bits that were too long that one might actually work even better and you're going to form a little clump that's almost teardrop shape like that and stick that to the back like that that might actually be a little small let's get a third one in there do that that sort of look that looks more like it make sure it's pushed on properly can you see we now have a little towel so 
you're going to build up the front side let's do the head and the ears what i like to do is we're going to do a hair but ears first so let's get some brown only need two little bits don't need a lot because the ears they are big but they're thin so they look about the same size we're going to shape them into a ball like so then that ball you're going to twist the bottom into a long teardrop shape and then pinch it flat like that now if you've got a tool that's got a triangle to it you can come in and use that to put a bit of curve around like that but it doesn't matter because that is going to be the underside anyway you can just do them flat it looks fine but remember you're going from the widest section in like that just pushing the clay up to form sort of rabbit ear shape okay yeah and they're gonna go now I've got my head slanted to one side so we're gonna go one ear there and one ear down here like this See? like so then with the ears on we can get a few different shades of these curls we're going to build them into a little spiral like this i find it easier to do it on a counter and then put it on the head because you can make sure they're all joined up let's put a few more little ones in make it really shaggy like so so can you see how i've layered it so there's a few on top of the others like that mm, one of those now you've got that we can get a blade out and remove that from the side without tearing anything and you're going to put that directly in the center of his head push it down firmly and then you can lay these down and direct them how you want so that um, I will show you in a second do ground right see you end up with nice little punky hairdo going on yeah now I want to do a heart for it to put its face near I think since we got a lot of dark colors I might do a white heart I was thinking to go blue what do you reckon people white or blue to go with this cow anyone got any strong opinions white's more visible you can go white right. we're going to go back to that bit of green that I separated out because the back of it thank you very hedgehog the back of it is it's not as pretty as I would like 
So what I'm going to do is bring this down to a size that fits well, like that. And we're going to roll it into a ball, like so. And this one you've got to make sure is smooth. Right, smooth ball. Now, we're going to pinch that so it starts to go flat, but we're going to start to get the heart point, like so. Then when you push it in, can you see there's a slight border? That's all you need to get started with. We're just going to bring that green clay up around that heart, around the edges, and make sure it just starts to overlap that lip very slightly, like this. Now, when you get to here, the roundy bits of the heart, you can then shape them in pretty easily, like so. Excess clay push towards the back and it can help bring the um, heart looking more like a substantial piece than it actually was because it's quite thick at the back with clay. Now what I tend to do is with my ball tool, not my ball tool, my needle tool, just roll in that point so that I can start to shape it out the way that I want like so see and that just to me looks a lot more pretty than me just putting in the green the um, silver backed heart now before you bake it make sure you come in with a cotton bud and just clean off those fingerprints because those fingerprints are bits of polymer clay and once it's baked that'll stay on more it'll be harder to clean off basically you can come in with um isopropyl alcohol on your cotton bud but i find you don't need to just a quick one of them and it cleans up that surface. Now, if you didn't have the silver back to that heart, you would want to put tin foil behind it if it was transparent. Because that, can you see how the light catches on the inside and helps reflect around? That's what you want from your crystal. And what I'm going to do is lift her chin up, get that heart underneath, and lean it like that just make sure it's all pushed down firmly and everything's attached right but I think that will hold her head up properly and it looks cute so that's what the cow's going to look like very very cute one finished cow i just got to do the back off the camera but i will do that so i hope you all like this tutorial oh horns almost ended without putting horns on her <sighs> that was almost terrible wasn't it so horns let's get some clay this is ochre and white mix and again, same size as each other. We're going to start out with a ball. Like so. Make sure you haven't got any green or brown on your counter or your hands before you roll out your um ochre and white so i call this cream or you'll end up with it dirty but 
that's not a terrible thing because cows do get grubby so we're not sort of throw it in the bin situation also you can use um 70 percent proof rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol if you're uk um make sure that you don't use it a hundred percent i find a hundred percent is just too strong it melts too much you end up in a mess so that's a good good horn size or too big possibly too big so let's take that off and bring that up and can you see the tip is prone to just getting creased clay to it so spend some time to smooth that out right same with the next one you want two horns the same size as each other so I'm going to take off big lump before I even get started and just pinching and twisting and pulling towards the tip and coincidentally that's how I've done those hairs it's that shape and then you twist them together right do they look roughly the same little bit too much on that one there we are right two horns get all this out of the way now we're gonna come in actually it might be easier to do this with the hair off so let's take the hair off towards whoop like that I'm just moving it out of the way going to get the horns in and then I'm going to put it all back so we start out by pushing them make sure you've got your hand under the chin and then I'm going to put that hair back down like that Whoop. you need to be rejoined See, even us experienced ones make mistakes. There we go, hair's back on. Now, the horns come around the back and twist up like that. So around and twist up. It's kind of goat horn looking. Yeah? like that so now we're done the so cow highland cow lovely big horns got a hairdo going on got her ears going on i hope you like this tutorial i'd love to see how your highland cow turns out so do you can find me on Facebook under Carly Langridge or under Carly's Creative Clay. Langridge is L-A-N-G-R-I-D-G-E. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a really good new year and have fun making your Highland cows. I will see you all next week, okay? Bye now.